From characters miraculously coming back to life to the female characters being needlessly dumbed down, there's so much that's wrong with Outer Banks that can easily be fixed in the next season. The first thing the makers should do is that they should stop resurrecting characters. Big John being alive is the most obvious problem in season 3. His disappearance and presumed death set off the whole plot. So when it was revealed at the end of season 2 that he was still alive, it was a huge shock to viewers. But bringing back this character made the story and structure of the show much weaker. His death was the main point of the story, and with the sudden revelation, the writers made the audience lose any trust they had developed and went too far in being unrealistic. Outer Banks has never been the most realistic show on TV, but the drama of the show depends on the audience believing that the characters' lives are at stake. Even if Ward Cameron and Big John did die in the season 3 ending, it didn't mean much because the audience had already thought both of them were dead several times during the show's run. In fact, mourning characters that fans didn't like all that much in the first place is very exhausting. Not to mention the characters themselves don't have much reason to mourn these characters, as Sarah literally threatens to shoot her father shortly before his death. Ward has been resurrected more than twice during the show's run. Going forward, the makers should make sure that this was the last that we've seen of their resurrection stunts. Also, it wasn't just Big John and Ward that weren't likable. Nearly none of the characters have any depth, because of which uh, they'll have to start writing the characters better. In the first part of the season, the story is divided into three parts. The Pogue's adventures, plans that are bound to fail, and father-son time between Big John and John B. The first one is born boring, and the self-made problems our characters face are getting to the point where they are literally just asking for trouble. Even though the relationship between John B. and his father could have been interesting, the way it was executed was disappointing, especially because Chase Stokes' performance as John B. was very forgettable, while Big John is just obsessive and has no depth beyond that. In the second part of the season, the Pogues try to save Big John from the evil Carlos Singh, but because these characters are poorly written, the writers try and fail to make the viewers care about them. Singh has nothing to do with the original story of the show, and as a villain, he is both boring and easy to forget. Big John's rude behavior is also a big problem for the tone and marketability of the show. People really don't care what happens to him because of his repulsive attitude. Season 4 not only has to have a better villain, better written characters and good character dynamics, but the makers will also have to fix the characters to make the audience actually care about them. While staying on the topic of bad character writing, the show constantly messes up the female characters. They shouldn't be portrayed as being so immature. It's normal for kids to learn to embrace their sexuality and make rash decisions. It's all part of growing up, but Outer Banks makes the mistake even worse by not having Sarah explain herself when she kisses Topper. It looks like a simple kiss, but the way it's written makes it sound like a lot more. This makes it easy for John B. to think that she wanted to hurt him. It brings up the fact that Kiara slept with Pope in Season 2 after John B. turned her down. Pope is shown to be in love with Kiara, just like Topper was with Sarah. And even though Kiara wasn't written to be using Pope like Sarah was with Topper, it's still a big disservice to the female male leads to have them sleeping with male characters as a lazy way to make the Pogues fight. Fans of the show were upset that Kiara dumped Pope soon after, and Sarah is written to have done the same thing to Topper, which sent him over the edge. So it's sloppy writing to make Sarah and Kiara look like they're cruelly making these bad choices so that the male characters can think they're cold. Outer Banks would do well by treating Sarah as a more important character. This was done for Kiara and JJ's relationship, with a jealous Pope adapting. The writing for the characters may be lazy, because the show has clearly overstayed its welcome, because of which I feel like the show should end before it gets even more trashy. The character's goal in the first and second seasons is to get the wealth that John B.'s father found before he disappeared. The main characters are trying to find the money before other characters like Ward get in the way. The third season is
is set up the same way as the last two. It starts strong, gets boring in the middle, and ends with a surprise. This season, the character's relationship is stronger, and so are the stakes. For example, Kiara and JJ's relationship is complicated and stays that way for the whole season, but the season almost depends on flashbacks, like showing John B as a child, to lead John B to his father and give the show some feeling. The violence and fights on the streets don't make the hour-long episodes go by much faster, making it seem like season 3 should have been the last, because it's basically the same plot every season in different settings. Despite being repetitive, the show is still fun to watch, but the story isn't very deep and there isn't a real message behind it. A new season has already been announced, so the showrunners should do themselves a favor and end it before it gets worse. Ending on a good note is always better than getting cancelled due to hate. Moving on, the show is known to be highly unrealistic, but still, Rafe not being caught yet still stands out as a major plot hole. It would be nice if the show fixed or addressed the glaring plot holes. In Season 2, there was a full-scale war taking place in Outer Banks, and Ward tried to blame John B for killing the sheriff, but Lana, another recurring character, lets John B's crew take the blame, even though she knew the sheriff was on his side. Lana was probably afraid of Ward's thugs, but the FBI was in town, so she could have gone to the feds or the press to make sure nothing bad would happen to her. Instead, she stayed out of sight and didn't help clear the Pogue's name, which almost led the police to kill them. Lana also knows that John B is a good kid so it seemed like she didn't care about getting justice for him at all. The sheriff was shot by Rafe, but Ward took the blame, even though there was proof that Rafe was also doing illegal things. The feds just dropped their case against him. If Lana had told someone, both the father and the son would have gone to jail. But more importantly, if Rafe was a suspect in the first place, ballistics on the bullet and fingerprints on the gun, or at the scene, would show that he was responsible. Strangely, the police gave up on the Rafe link without confirming anything from the scene to find out what really happened, or if the rich dad covered for his kid. Lastly, they should make genuine and believable connections between the plots and should stop relying on coincidences. There are many instances throughout the show, and specifically in Season 3, where the makers made completely unrealistic and unbelievable connections to connect the branching plots. For example, JJ coincidentally encounters the people he owes money, and very easily convinces them to help rescue Kiara and then take both of them to John B. This was just one of the many dumb connections in Season 3. These lazy connections really threw me off, and they may not appeal to any other viewer either. So I hope they work on this issue in the next season, along with all the others I previously mentioned. That's all for the things that Outer Banks should change in Season 4. Holy Jesus. I don't want to drop that on your foot. <laughs>